This summer marks 30 years since the summer of violence, a name given to a moment in Denver defined by youth violence, dozens of murders and teens given life sentences. Denver 7's Micah Smith begins our 360 in-depth coverage. She reports that families and community leaders still feel the effect of those events all these years later. Against the backdrop of these almost million dollar homes is summer memories that are so baked into these Park Hill neighborhood streets. Collectively, they have a name, the summer of violence. You know, I don't like to see uh, young black people out here making the same mistakes I've made. You know, they don't need to be out here trying to kill each other. We're serious and we'll be here until we get this problem resolved. When the world's on fire. Our young people, amen, living fast. Dying young. 30 years later, we're taking you back to the places. Name is Reverend Leon Kelly. And people still impacted by the summer of 1993. I'm the executive director of the Open Door Youth Gang Alternative Program. Open Door is a nonprofit, is one of the oldest anti gang programs in this state. Started dealing with gangs back in 1982. The shootings in the beginning of this was more so to intimidate. Oh, we got a problem here? Because they've seen colors and boys in the hood and all that stuff. We got a problem here? And they thought it was you know, sort of cool. But by 1993, gang intimidation and movie adoration turned into murder. When the, mar the bullets start to hit their mark, it took it to another level. I was full-fledged gangbanger at the age of 17. James Miller was born in Denver's Park Hill neighborhood and says the summer of 93 was the pinnacle of his gang activities. Selling drugs, you know, smoking weed, getting drunk, terrorizing the neighborhood. The gang was a brotherhood for me. At 16, 17 years old, you know, how do you, how do you really gauge that? It was a lot of death. I was accused of killing a young man for his Bronco jacket. During my trial, I was found not guilty of first degree murder, convicted of Attempted aggravated robbery, conspiracy to commit robbery, and first degree assault. I was given 64 years altogether. I did 26 years straight. It's time he cannot get back, but time he can give back to others. I'm hoping to, you know, to get involved with the Open Door program, help kids. And that's Andre again. Suzanne Price's son, Andre, was 21 years old when he was shot and killed. I mean, I thought he was a good kid. That's my child. So he went over to his cousin's house. Not even 30 minutes later, they called me and said, Andre got shot. Suzanne says she thinks she knows who killed her son, but with no one willing to talk, her son's case is still unsolved. I have a very angry, Heart. 28 years, and I feel these young men, it's four of them, walking around here like you never did anything. I just want justice. My heart goes out to Ms. Price and, and many others who are still living that. So I started that death list, you know, to show the concerns I had. I think there was 30-something-something something on my death list in 91. You know, I'm more than that in 92. And so here we come to 93. And it was made history here in this state, the summer of violence. And I look into my list and I have to say, wait a minute. And the numbers of violence, the numbers of death in 93 was lower than it was in 91 and 92. I looked at Jack Roth, this man driving into Mercedes, going down Mont View. Group of kids came up on the side of him. Boom, 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 shot up his car. He drove up on the lawn where he died. Mary Ann Lowe, she was moving stuff in from her car to her apartment here. Little gangsters, they saw her. They tried to get control of her purse. She didn't want to let it go. Boom, killed it. None of those people look like me. Now all of a sudden, it's the summer of violence. So we did all of that in 93. 94, after the pressure was off, the numbers went up. 95, numbers went up. Kelly says the nickname Summer of Violence restricts the youth violence to a three-month time frame and dismisses the failed policies that allow the violence to continue. People would say, Micah, that my spirit, my attitude is getting a little more callous over these decades, and maybe it is. Based on what I've seen, based on what I've had to deal with. But Kelly says there's hope. Because when one loses total hope. One developed the attitude of, I just don't care. I don't care. And Kelly says as a society, there's far too much to lose to stop caring. When the world's on fire. Our young people, when amen. Living fast. When the world's on fire. Dying young. You gotta wake up right now. Young people. Old people. Old people. He says we can look to the summer of 93 to learn how to save the next generation. My mother's love. My dearest son. 
Why did you leave us? Some heart wrenching, life changing. When the mist have rolled away, they don't know who's on their side. Unimaginable loss. We will understand it better by and by. Reporting in Denver, Micah Smith, Denver 7. And looking closer here, that summer, 1993, also marked the arrival of Pope John Paul II, who came to Denver for World Youth Day. This is a first of its kind event in North America. The pontiff arrived at extremely strict security at a time of that heightened gang violence here in the city. And organizers feared the summer of violence would scare visitors away, but some 750,000 people went to Cherry Creek State Park to hear the Pope speak. And even 30 years later, the summer of violence holds a special significance for Denver. On the night of the Nuggets NBA championship win, when 10 people were wounded in a downtown celebration shooting, Denver Police Chief Ron Thomas made an ominous warning, saying conditions were right for, quote, an even more violent summer than we had in 93. Well, I looked into Denver crime rates and found 46 murders have been reported in Denver so far in 2023, and that's less than half of what was reported for the entirety of 2021 when murders reached an all time high. It is important to recognize that high number is partially due to population growth. And Denver Mayor Mike Johnston has committed to improving Denver's crime rates, and part of his plan includes putting more than 200 first responders on the streets and making it more difficult for criminals and young people to obtain firearms.